do we believe that, you know, the Broncos can uh, win oh. with Russ still? They need to because there's too much money. But to, can they? Can they? Yes, yeah. they can. Mm-hmm. He was just saying, I know I can play up to – I need him to go find wherever he lost his talent, wherever he left it. If bring he has to go back to Seattle and bring it down, like, mm-hmm. he's got to go find it. There has to be – there. Ha- in Denver, there have to be a lot of come to Jesus conversations. Russ needs to have a conversation with himself. He's got to understand that how he has been interacting with his teammates, how he's been presenting himself uh, uh, just as a human, not as an android. Like, that all has to be worked out. I think the Broncos have to go out and find a head coach who has the credibility to walk in that locker room and say, okay, enough of what just happened. Like, Russ, like, we need you to come down here and understand that you are playing the worst to anybody mm. in this entire locker room. He is fixable because when you think about it, the nine Pro Bowls, the two Super Bowl appearances, the one win for over 40,000 passing yards, mm. that doesn't just go away. But in talking to GMs and the personnel execs this past week about Russell and what his legacy is, the responses were so over, like, all over the map that I found that to be a red flag. Like, do you think Russ is still, is still can, he can still be that guy? Do you think this will tarnish his legacy? Some people I spoke to said this, I didn't expect him to play this bad, but this just confirms what we all knew, that he was on the decline and a product of the Seattle machine. Whoa. Other people thought, no, you can't, the stats, you just don't wipe away all those stats. That guy's still in there. But that guy clearly is in there, but it worked within a system where Russ I didn't understand Nathaniel Hackett. He's a timing and rhythm guy. Like, Russ coming in, he's not trying to be on on schedule. His whole thing is being off schedule. Like, that's the beauty of Russ. So uh, you have to bring in somebody who offensively either has a connection with him from from the Seattle days or somebody like a Sean Payton, whether Sean Payton wants that job, I don't know, buddy. I don't know if you do. But if he wants that job, bring somebody like him in who can walk in a locker room that has instant credibility and can look at this defense and say, we're going to figure this out. It's not all on you guys. Who can walk in there and look at the offensive guys, who can look at these wide receivers who've been throwing their helmets and the offensive linemen who've been cursing up a storm on the sidelines and say, I got this. Like, we are going to be good. Russ is one of us. Well, listen, first of all, Russell has been in decline for a couple years now. That's number one. Yeah. He's been falling off for a couple of years. We, you know, we haven't seen Pete Russell Wilson for, for quite some time. Mm. That's number one. You brought up the, you know, you brought up an interesting point about how Russell wants to play off schedule. That's his game. And that's the part of his game that deteriorated the most because mm-hmm. his athletic ability is the aspect yes. that's been deteriorating yes. the most. So the, now the question is, who is Russell Wilson as a quarterback? Is he the t- is he the type of guy? that can win you games from, you know, from the neck up, inside the pocket, that's really never been his game. Right. His game has always been he's – he's been backed up by great defense, he's always had a running game, and he's been making plays off schedule outside the pocket. Mm-hmm. That's been his deal. Yeah. Well, when your athletic ability starts leaving you and you have to start winning a certain way, can, we, can, we, can he really do that? And the answer is no, like – Part of this year has been, yes, we can talk about Nathaniel Hackett and him not being a good coach, but part of it has been Russell Wilson was playing inside the pocket primarily, and look what that got the Denver Broncos. Look what that got Russell Wilson. And so for me, I'm looking forward. I'm like, I'm seeing a guy, you know, in his 30s, diminishing athlete, not the type of guy, not the guy that's playing, that's traditionally – play within the pocket, beat you from the neck up. He's never been that type of guy. What coach are you going to get it going? You know, what coach are you going to have to come in and, and, you know, revitalize Russell Wilson? Yeah. If I'm Sean Payton, do I want to ch- attach my legacy to trying to bring, the, you know, revitalize this guy? When you can have basically the pick of the litter, when, when all these jobs open up, you'll be able to have the pick of wh- whatever job you want because he has that type, because Sean Payton has that type of cachet. I'm just – I'm real skeptical skeptical about if if we'll see, quote, unquote, the old Russ, Russell Wilson. Roger. He's going to have to yeah. – he's going to have to reinvent himself because, again, the I think the athletic 
aspect of his game has diminished. A hundred percent. I mean, and listen, I picked on him yesterday, and I probably would have done the same thing as they were desperate for a quarterback. But let's be honest, George Payton's had an awful year. Oh, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. he gave him $163 absolutely. million dollars guaranteed. He gave up two ones, two twos, and no offense. And then on oh. top of that, he throws in Nathaniel Hackett. <laughs> I mean, my yes. goodness gracious. I mean, can you have a worse year as a general manager? Right. Just a if I own a team, team, I got boy. new owners out there. If I own a team, he'd have to be in my office on January 10th. Hey, George. What's up here? Because he's, yeah. he's, sing, he's singing right. for a supper. Yeah. Right. That's me. I so the GM takes some hit here. I Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.